In today's video, we will be comparing and contrasting the similarities and differences between both katsu and schnitzel. And by the end of the video, maybe you'll be able to draw your own conclusion on which cutlet reigns supreme. I know that the title of the video is probably like comparing a shawarma to a taco, and if you really think about it, a schnitzel is probably more closely related to a Maillard, Maillard, Paillard or Milanese dish. But nonetheless, I've actually noticed a pattern as of late. There are three things that nearly every millennial chef, cook, food person is obsessed with. And those are good bread, fresh thyme, like the herb thyme, and really anything in the Japanese culinary canon. So yeah, the world loves katsu, so we making katsu. And then you got schnitzel over here, which is a completely different game. A juicy cutlet pounded ultra thin into this frisbee sized sort of like crispy meat patty. I mean, really what's not to love? As usual, the measurements to cook along with the recipes I made in the video will be posted below. All right, let's get into it. So both of these cutlets are traditionally fried in one way or another. And things that we fry must be breaded. Let's take a look at the breadcrumb situation for this showdown, starting with katsu. Japanese katsu calls for panko breadcrumbs, which are made from crustless white bread. I'm going to make my own BCs by shaving the crust off this here fawn loaf, cutting the innards into cubes and pulsing them in my ultra tiny food processor. Don't throw away the crusts. You can make like non panko breadcrumbs or a panzanella salad with them or something. Or you can totally just use store bought panko, but I feel the homemade gives a flakier end result. On to the schnitzel BC situation. Here I'm using using some plain store-bought breadcrumbs, but I do like to mob them just a tad. I've found that the best schnitzels command a super fine, almost sand-like consistency in their breadcrumbs. The super fine breadcrumbs help to create a special texture, which we'll talk about later. Just add your store-bought BCs to the blender and blitz away until you get something like this. So now let's talk egg wash. By the way, egg wash is just a name for an egg and water mixture used to coat things before frying or to glaze a pastry, etc. Two important things here. One, I once heard that egg wash should have the consistency of cream, which is a really good way to think about it. Just add water and whisk the eggs until you get there. Two, we need to heavily season the egg wash because we will not be seasoning our cutlets directly. More on this later. Now let's talk about le meat. Today I'll be using pork loin for both cuts, aka what pork chops are sliced from. The choice to use pork is what defines our cutlets. The use of pork mates katsu, tonkatsu, ton meaning pork and katsu meaning cutlet. On the other hand, our schnitzel keeps its regular name, but it's just considered German style, not to be confused with the Austrian Wiener schnitzel, which is made from veal. I learned this little trick from the German butcher down the street. For the schnitzel, we're going to butterfly the meat, as shown here, which helps us get a nice wide cutlet once pounded out. As for the katsu, just slice off a portion as you would normally. Alright, now it's time to take our meat to Pound Town. Wow. Here's a little side-by-side -side comparison of the katsu cutlet and the schnitzel cutlet. I like to use a massive two gallon Ziploc bag to pound out the cutlets. It is definitely more useful when making schnitzel than katsu. A smaller bag or a plastic wrap would work fine too though. When tenderizing, be sure to use the flat non-textured side of the meat mallet so you don't damage the protein. I've also seen some people cut the sides of the bag, but I really don't think it's necessary. Just pop the meat in the bag and pound away, soldier. Beginning with the katsu cutlet, pound to about a half inch or 12 centimeter thickness. The katsu doesn't have to be quite schnitzel status thin, but give it some love with the hammer. Now onto the schnitz. Open the butterflied cutlet and place it in the bag like so. I like to pound down the thickest part in the middle a little more than the sides because it's a little fatter. Then begin flattening the rest of the cutlets using a hammer motion while also pulling away from the bag to spread things out V thin. We're looking for a quarter inch or six centimeter thick piece of pork. Our schnitzel is on the left, katsu on the right. Katsu, schnitzel, katsu, schnitzel. All right, let's take a quick look at what we got going on here. On the left, we have the katsu, potato starch, and our panko breadcrumbs. On the right, the schnitzel all-purpose flour and our super fine breadcrumbs. Both cutlets will be using the same seasoned egg wash. To coat our cutlets, we're using a classic dry, wet, dry breading station. First, we shall dust in the starch or flour, then dunk the coated cutlet in the egg wash before finishing in the breadcrumbs. We'll start with the katsu. You've probably definitely maybe heard this before, but when breading, it kind of helps to keep one hand wet and the other dry. It sounds pretty simple, but I still mess this up sometimes. Just try your best to keep your hands organized. It'll make breading faster and less messy. And into the breadcrumbs. Shake off any extra breadcrumbs and set the cutlet aside on a plate. Rinse and repeat. Okay, katsu done. Moving on to the schnitzel. 
We will be using the same dry wet dry station, but replace the potato starch with AP flour and panko with plain breadcrumbs. Oh yeah, and according to the German butcher near my crib, the sign of a true schnitzel are the bubbles that form when frying. To get these bubbles, we will need to spritz our cutlets with a thin coat of water before dipping them in the flour. And when we fry in the next step, the water will actually steam and begin to puff and souffle up, creating like a crispy yet airy surface. You'll see. And really the same thing here, just try to keep one hand dry and the other wet. Rinse and repeat. Now that we have all our pork coated in its designated breading, it is now TTF. Alright, so here's my frying setup. Pop a candy thermometer in a heavy bottom stainless steel dutch oven. If you don't have a candy thermometer, a digital therm pen works really well too, but the candy thermometer allows me to just kind of monitor things easier. I like frying in either grapeseed or canola oil for its neutral flavor and its ability like not to degrade at high heat. Uh, I like to fry in these buttes anywhere between 350 to 375, roughly 185 Celsius. Unless you're using a commercial grade basket deep fryer, it's important to move around the cutlet so the bottom doesn't scorch. Frying is a relatively quick cooking method, so this schnitzel here should be ready after like a minute frying on each side, so like two minutes total. You'll know when the schnitzel is ready by its golden brown color. Ugh, perfecto. Notice those little bubbles, we'll take a closer look later though. Now let's do the katsu. Really it's the same thing here, carefully drop a cutlet away from your body into the hot oil, and since the katsu is a slightly thicker piece of meat, it'll take a slightly longer time to cook through. Maybe a minute and a half per side here, again just look for that golden brown perfection. Oh yeah, and season up with some crunchy salt fresh out the fryer. From here really just rinse and repeat with the remaining cutlets. The more you fry as you continue, you'll notice that your cutlets get to take on a little bit of a darker color. That's totally fine, it's just what happens. And you don't have to throw away the frying oil, just strain it off and save it for your next fry sesh. Okay, let's get a closer look at these little buggers. Right off the bat, you can see that there are texture differences for sure. Katsu has a very flaky, rough, almost crusty exterior due to its panko coating. I mean, just look at how that salt embeds itself into the breading. Fascinating. The schnitzel, on the other hand, looks a little smoother. This is due to those super fine, almost sand-like breadcrumbs that we blended up earlier. Notice the little air bubbles and how they bounce back. Without that spritz of water before the breading, this would not happen. The little air bubbles just add a little extra surface area to the schnitzel, giving it a little more crunch. Not to mention, it's very gorgy. With the schnitz, I'm just serving up some mustardy German potato salad. A little on the plate, the rest on the table and floor. A small glob of tangy cherry compote, and some homemade spicy mustard. Homemade mustard is super easy to make, I did a video on that a while back, if you want to give it a go, I'll link it. And a little sad parsley leaf for color. I personally think it's important to serve fried food with something tangy, spicy, and or acidic. It sort of helps cut through any heaviness. Next, the katsu. Slice it up so it's easier to eat with chopsticks. Pro tip. I'm serving this katsu with some cabbage slaw, and if I had any, I totally would have eaten this with white rice. But don't be like me, eat this with white rice if you have it. And here we have some store-bought katsu sauce. You can think of this as sort of like a slightly sweeter, tangier Japanese version of barbecue sauce. Just a little over the top there. Katsu and schnitzel are commonly made with different proteins, sauces, and sides, so these dishes are just a couple examples of what can be done, so yeah, get creative with it. I totally understand why people love katsu so much, the flakiness is almost unparalleled by any other cutlet like in its class. And I mean, just like, listen to this. Yeah. Now the schnitzel is just as powerful. I'm a big fan of the crusty bubbles and the overall thinness and size of the cutlet. The schnitzel isn't only visually pleasing, but packs a mean crunch. So yeah, both cutlets are special in their own ways, so comment below which cutlet speaks its meaty truth to you. And there you have it. Now whether you are on team schnitzel or katsu, or asking yourself why you have to choose in the first place, which you totally don't, you can be, you can be Switzerland here. Regardless, I hope this video was insightful and helpful. And if you made it this far into the video, you are the schnitz. And do not forget to subscribe if you do like videos like this. I'm going to be posting weekly here. Click the little bell icon too. I think like that means you're notified when I come up with a new video, which yeah, YouTube stuff. And I wish you all very happy cooking and I will see you V soon. Bye.